All right, mic check. Welcome, everybody. Please let me know if you can hear me. Let's turn this on also as well. Great. Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Hi, Nick. How are you? Dan, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Perfect. Let's move this and share my screen. There you go. Now you should be able to see me and see my screen. I'm sharing my trading view. Guys, welcome everybody. Glad to be with you. My name is Sol. Welcome to the training room. Um, as always, please on your chat settings, change it so everyone can see what you type. That way it will be more interesting for everyone. Uh, second, uh, what we're going to talk about is just my experience, the way I read the charts and I analyze the markets. Nothing I say here is meant to be a buy or sell signal. Just uh, be responsible for your own trading. Um, I, I do have to tell you, we're going to have a shorter than usual session. We're going to go through the markets and I some messages I want to share with you. Um, but we just released, as you might know, the, the boot camp. So we have a lot of uh, work to do. And um, but I still want to have the time with you and, and show you some perspect perspectives, especially because we're just starting a new month, so we have a, a wider analysis that we can do. And I would like to start with you with the um, with the dollar index. It's always a good exercise, and it's something I do on my trading routine to 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 see what the dollar, how the dollar is behaving against other currencies. Just remember with. The, this index is the behavior of the dollar against a basket of currencies. And then we can go from there to each specific currency and see how it's behaving against it. Uh, but from here, we can see if the dollar is, you know, overall strengthening or weakening, and um, that, can, that can be uh, also helpful. Uh, um, Lohan, you have the, I'll throw it here. Okay, there you have the, the link for the for the bootcamp. So as we start with the with the dollar index, uh, we know you know from the last months we have been slightly strengthening against other currencies. The the dollar has been strengthening. Uh, we did touch this key level, okay, which is the ninety four point five. Okay, you can see if I zoom out, uh, we can see like. Uh, a resistance there and we just stopped there a few days ago and uh, there will be a lot of interest uh, in, in stopping the price right there because if that level breaks there's no demand there's no supply here in order to you know stop the price from breaking hard uh, at least you know maybe to those levels uh, you, you can see there's some supply there, but that's quite a few points. So uh, a lot of micro adjustments in the institutions and banks would change uh, if, if that break happens uh, and matures. So it, th that would be a, 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 a strong, you know, a strong resistance. Uh, but if we zoom in a little bit, uh, we also have a, another level Okay, before this break right here, we did have this kind of level there. Okay, provider resistance several times, one, two, three. And then we had the breakout here. Now that breakout led all the way to the 94.5, pull back, test it again, and repelled. Um, and from this point, there were two scenarios. Okay, and this is something we're gonna go and see across all currencies. Okay, now let me zoom, zoom in. After this failure of breaking, after this first pullback and, and the attempt to break and, and a re, you know a rejection down, we test the you know, prior resistance. Now acted as a support, I guess. Uh, and from here, you know buyers had the opportunity to bring the price all the way to the tops. And instead of that, there was a turn, a pivot point forming right here. Okay, right at this area, and then rejecting the, uh, you know, throwing the, the price down and closing below that um, that level. Um, and in normal market, you know, I, I was 
very, very certain that after that day, we would see continuation, especially because there's no demand back here to stop a continuation lower. Okay, so we had this breakout there, okay, that red uh, bar. And I, I saw no reason why we wouldn't have seen a continuation lower. No demand, probably some demand here, okay? But this would have, um, there was a lot of possibilities of this continuing lower. And then just last Friday, boom. Okay, that huge red, uh, green candle, a lot of bullish pressure um, deleting all that, that attempt, causing like a false breakout. For those of you who like um, candlestick pattern, this is a bullish uh, engulfing pattern. Um, so, so we can see that we have mixed signals. There was an attempt to break lower and there was a powerful push higher. And the big question is, where do we go from here? Uh, because there's there should be momentum now um, behind this movement from last Friday. Um, still, okay, leaving this kind of uptrend intact, um, but we have to see and, and and wait and see because we we had we're trapped in this consolidation. We had the opportunity to go lower, rejection higher. We'll see a few days and we'll see how this behaves. Um, if, if we can reach this for a third time, the resistance, then there might be uh, a breakout, okay? Af especially after a, a movement like that, which is also a good opportunity to remind all of ourselves that in order for price to break these key levels, there usually has to be a fundamental movement behind it. So I just wanna make sure you can see, yeah, so you should be able to be, you know, the calendar, yeah, great. So, um, you know, this week be ready because be prepared because there's a lot of fundamentals. Uh, we have, you know, on the on the Aussie and the New Zealand, but especially starting Wednesday, there's FOMC. We don't expect we don't expect a, a change in the in interest rates, but these kind of announce announcement tend to bring a lot of volatility into the markets. Uh, Thursday, same, but. For the pound, okay, the bank rate again, no surprise expected, no change expected, uh, but a lot of volatility. And of course, on Friday we have uh, non-farm payrolls and uh, uh, some news on the CAD. So expect to be a very volatile and choppy week, and that might trigger the the break either to the downside or to the upside on the dollar index. Now let's go ahead and compare how's the dollar behaving against each one of the currencies, the majors, and uh, we'll take some questions and then we'll move off. Uh, I'm apologize in advance, we will have a shorter than usual session, but it's important to, to review this together. Uh, all, of, all of you may be aware, we just released the, the bootcamp. So if you go to the link here on the, on the chat, you will have all the details. Um, we're very excited. We're very excited about it. And now let's jump to the, to the platform, okay? And see how we behaving and how we're doing against, against other currencies. So let's start with the Euro USD. This is like a mirror of the dollar index. Okay, we, we see the downtrend. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, the attempt to break lower, push, a, higher down pivot for informed on my trading room last week we spoke about this scenario being possible and i was aligning myself and looking for this turn in the market to the upside and again i was not expecting then on friday this bearish movement okay that was very unexpected for me that denied all the you know bullish attempt uh, or, or the leg higher, and it just denied completely. A huge movement down. If we go and do us a, a, a little, okay, of course we have, where there's demand. Let me show you that more in detail. Uh, you can see the demand right there okay, from the hourly chart. And you can see that's the point where that 
movement stopped and now it's now compressing up. Uh, if we have a look, a close look at how that formed, uh, that was the, the bullish movement. Uh, I, I believe this was Asian session, low volatile, and then during London and, and, and New York session last Friday, this uh, pushed lower. Um, supply being created. And the uh, momentum down all this area, okay? This was in real time, this was demand, correct? Real time, that was demand, just pushed through. So now that becomes a supply, that's a swap zone. So if we keep compressing towards that area, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see now like lower, okay? Either from, from these levels. And if it keeps compressing, there's more and more supply all this area here, here, and here to keep pushing the, the, movement, the movement down, especially because it is just compressing. You can see the you know, momentum against compression. You can see how it's, it's taking very, very long. And we have already passed the, the London session. We're getting to the New York session, which are volatile sessions. And we're just compressing uh, all day long. So it wouldn't surprise me to see price forming a, a, a leg lower. If we clean this a little bit, we go to the monthlies, okay, and we do the, the, the same exercise. Uh, we can see two months ago, and uh, we spoke about it, I believe, in my trading rooms, we have these two months, uh, forming tails at the bottom, okay, reacting to demand or support or whatever down here and opportunity to create a, a push higher. Once that failed to form, okay, with this red candle here, now the door opens up for the opposite to, to happen. So now the, the, the fail to move higher opens up the opportunity to, to move uh, lower, which was two months ago. And all October last month, we form a tail and a rejection which is Friday, okay, last day. We just saw the details on that. And on a monthly pattern, candlestick pattern that forms kind of a bearish signal. Okay, so I guess there's a lot of bearish pressure right now. Uh, uh, two failed attempts of, to, to move higher, very bearish day, a uh, month, a uh, bearish monthly signal. Let's see how this um, develops. Uh, we have previous month high and we have previous month low. And those would be the turn turning points in the in the upcoming weeks. So we're moving in a sideways market in a range um, contained between this bar and this bar right here. Okay, so overall, my bias, but I, it's not the clearest pattern, but my bias is to the bearish side, especially because of Friday and, and the failed attempt to move um, high. Uh, there's some demand here. There's a lot of you know, interest on, on holding on, on that level and preventing a, a break lower. Uh, but I see here a lot of bearish pressure. So my overall bias would be to the downside, uh, pullbacks to the supply areas, which you saw on the hourly charts are good opportunities to, to sell. And I will keep, I will, I will maintain my bearish position or my bearish bias all the way to this line, probably these levels right there, because there might be some supply there. We have to go and, and do some analysis, but there might be some uh, supply there. But as long as we're below this red line, I want to be bearish, okay? Um, let me clean this a little bit. Pound is kind of a different story. Um, if we just look at that, okay? That's a very aggressive 
um, recovery. Okay, there was a push lower, pullback, and many attempts. Okay, there was there was a, a lot of bearish signals here at this point to continue lower, and instead of that, we moved higher. So after that movement, uh, all my bias was was to the to the bull side. Okay, to expect either for a sideways movement or a pullback and to continue higher, and that remains the same intact. Uh, I will be looking for demand areas um, in order to go long again with a little bit more cautious because of last Friday, which was very aggressive. But besides that and this pair, I continue with my bullish bias on as long as we stay above hey, this demand. If we go to lower time frames, we might see other demand areas. Um, no, not really. Okay, we are there's a lot of compression here so price shouldn't hold there so we have the demand down here so as long as we stay um, above this demand i'll maintain my bullish bias but very careful because of the probable strengthening of the of the dollar against all the currencies uh, usd jpy it's a much clearer story. Uh, it is the only major pair I see actually trending. Okay, break, pullback, trend, or leg, pullback, leg. This is actually trending uh, for a for a while. Uh, the JPY weak and the dollar overall strengthening. So that's why we see these aggressive movements up. Um, right now we just met, and let's go to the. To the monthly okay you can see there's a lot of resistance okay monthly resistance right now where, where it is that's the reason it stopped there and now the price it's con it is contained there the big question is where is this going um will it just break and if it breaks this is already a an, a touched okay a test supply so it might just continue higher uh, will it pull back also, if it pulls back, um, there's a lot of demand. So pullbacks will be very healthy in order to continue the, the, the bullish trend. Uh, a break, a break on the of this resistance. Okay, you can see there's little tails there, some supply there back here. But after that, there's nothing for. Uh, at least 200 pips or 250 pips. So a break here has a potential movement to of 200 pips. Um, but here my bias is much clearer. Okay, it's a, it's a it's a bullish bias. Uh, not right now. Right now, I'll be buying on the on the high at the highest price. So I don't want to buy right now. I want to wait for a pullback of the, uh, okay to a pullback to this area or to lower demand let's see if we can find um if we can find more uh, not really okay all the way to this area okay so a pullback okay a break lower red line demand I will keep my bullish bias as long as we are above this line. So any pullback, I will be looking to buy. That's well aligned with the dollar strengthening, the dollar index, and the yen getting weak against most of the pairs. Uh, USD CAD, a different story. Kind of. Uh, not, uh, this is one of the only ones we see the uh, US dollar actually weakening against. Uh, a specific currency, which is the uh, USD CAD. Uh, we spoke on previous sessions about divergence being formed here. Uh, supply, how price came, react to supply, we're moving down. And here is this red box is also a, a fresh supply. So we might go to test that area again, that supply. But the overall pressure right now is to the downside. 
So if we break to the upside, we have an untested supply right there. And I'll, I'll be looking to sell. Okay, that would be, that would be the, the pattern I'm looking for. Um, so that's for the USD CAD, Kiwi and, um, and Aussie, stronger, okay, looking stronger. Um, we see the Kiwi getting stronger. Now this consolidation, and we do not see here, okay, if we analyze Friday, which is this red candle, we don't see that engulfing candle as we see on the euro. Or we don't see that uh, very aggressive pressure uh, of the dollar against the of, against the kiwi. So that remains my bias here, bullish. Okay, uh, kiwi getting stronger, moving sideways. Uh, it might it, it might break down, of course, um, but there's demand. Right there. If you go to our charts, you will see it. Demand right there. And if we look how price have been um, behaving and developing, we we see a lot of sideways movement, sideways leg, leg, sideways leg, leg, sideways. Now we're okay, moving sideways. So we know a leg is coming. Um, these have been average, kind of average movements. Okay, look at that that okay, that movement from here to here kind of average so we might expect a move okay if this breaks might go down all the way to this demand right there who knows but my bias in the, the fact that um friday there was not pressure to the downside um i, I would be more inclined to buy Okay, so maybe a, a break, retest, and continuation. Okay, this is on supply and demand terms. There's the rally. Now it's forming a base. This might continue another rally or a drop. Okay, but I, I am expecting more a, a continuation. So I will remain with cautious and out after confirmation, looking opportunities to buy. Actually, this one, um, Aussie, quite similar. Uh, nothing very important on the franc, a lot of choppiness, a lot of compression, just we've been compressing, 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 not, not this character, not this kind of movement where we have healthy legs, or this one here, or this one here. From a few months ago, which has been moving, you know, in like compressionary way, and that continues. Um, so I have, I need more information. This is quite frankly move it sideways so on, probably on this demand back here we can buy if it goes all the way up to this supply we can sell but not right now we're in the middle of nowhere okay I, I try to stay away from compressing markets it's very hard to to manage those ones and yeah let's review the gbp jpy And uh, we see a similar pattern than the US, the, um, the yen getting weaker. If you go to Euro yen, you will see the Euro weak uh, as well. So pound, pound getting stronger, um, now compressing. And this, this pattern is, is a, a beautiful pattern because you know 70% of the times you, you, you tend to see continuation higher. The question is when. So if we try to define de some some demands, and let's throw some lines. Okay, as long as price keeps compressing that way, remember it is consuming all supply from the, okay, all, all, all supply is being consumed. So there's supply here, consume. New supply form, consume. New supply form, consume. So as long as we continue in this compression, once we reach a key support or a demand uh, around those lines, um, we tend to see an aggressive um, movement up okay that would be that would be my my reading so i would i would like to be a buyer 
um, as long as we stay above you know all those lines there's more demand um, of course there's more demand down here but if price goes all the way down, I'll, 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 I might buy to buy, I might look to, to buy, but not as a position, but more like a little scalp. But as long as we continue in this way and we react around the, that demand area, I would be willing to buy and hold, okay, for a swing. Um, well aligned to pound strong and yen weak. Um, okay, let me see if there's any question, guys. Any other for you? you tend to, to trade, you want to analyze together? Any questions, anything? I, 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 after, after reviewing that, I will always ask myself which, which part is clear, okay? So for me, the clearest ones are USDJPY, okay, clear bullish bias, dollar CAD, clear bearish bias. And um, for my intraday trading, I tend to go to the euro USD. In this case, I will go um, neutral bearish. Okay, I kind of, and Nick's requesting for pound New Zealand. That's a, that's a pair I don't tend to trade, but clearly bearish. <laughs> um, uh, approaching demand. So, We might see a stop there, but there's a lot of, you know, these kind of movements. That was Friday. These kind of movements creating a, a, we'll, we'll go to lower time frames and we'll, uh, we'll check those. And, you know, you have a lot of a lot of supply areas, let's see. Okay, so, so, so this tail, look, look how that was formed. Okay, no, so now you can refine your entry. Okay, on the hourly charts, clear supply. Compressing right now on the hourly, so we might see once we touch this demand, we might see a reaction higher, but the overall trend for me at least is bearish. Um, the dailies, yeah, we're approaching demand. Th those are hard, hard to, to, to break. We don't tend to see as easily breaks of, of these levels. Yeah, so we might see a reaction or two before breaking that, but there's a lot of bearish pressure. You can see the amount of tails, in the upside, you know, pushing this market down. So my view would be bearish. Um, New Zealand, New Zealand, yen. Similar to USD and JPY, uh, we saw New Zealand against, we saw the keyword against the USD strong relatively and the weak and the, and the, and the yen uh, weak against all, all, uh, all the board. So we see the same strong Kiwi and weak uh, yen, we might see the same, you know, key resistance there. So there, there, there will be resistance, but my overall bias would be bullish. Um, same pattern, we're just now consolidation, consolidating. Might try to break again, but on any kind of pullback, I would try to join the bullish movement, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm yen, uh, I'm, 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 I'm selling the yen right now. Um, Guys, I um, really apologize this has been short and we didn't have the opportunity today to do some live trading, but tomorrow um, Ruben or Yaniv will be with you and do some live trading and myself next week, hopefully not on Monday, so we can do some live trading. Um, and go check the bootcamp. If you have any questions, just reach support. They'll be happy to help, help you. And thanks for thanks for, for, for being here. And um, you know, be careful in this week, all the fundamentals, uh, look at your monthly analysis, your, your, you know, what, what levels um, you consider a key to maintain your bias, either bullish or bearish, uh, key demand, supplies, everything into account, okay? 
Thank you, guys. Um, see you next week. Bye-bye.